Oh my goodness, it is 10.17 when I am making this video. Hi everyone! <laughs> Hi everyone, welcome back to Dimensional Wellness Channel. This is Dee Dee. Um, make sure that you do all those things that we do on YouTube. Subscribe, comment down below. Especially if you have, <laughs> if you have had similar or compatible experiences. Um... Today is going to be a story time that's going to connect with the previous story time that I did uh, with the Akashic Record reading. And now that I'm thinking about it, um, maybe these experiences are, excuse me, connected to each other. Um, I'm sorry, there's like a lot of energy and sometimes when there's like a lot of energy around something, I get very, very winded. It gets very hard for me to like talk without sounding winded <laughs> uh, so let me just kind of try to calm myself down because um you know and I think I might have mentioned this a few times but sometimes uh with some of the videos like I do them over again and you know like I don't say at the same time every time um and so I don't know if I've been saying this a lot but I feel like I have uh but, you know, so I have these dreams and these experiences, right? And not that I, uh, not that I don't take them seriously, I guess, but sometimes it still even baffles me how much, uh, like something is going on and I'm perceiving it and then I find things that talk about what I experienced and it's gonna make sense when I go into the story time but basically just what I'm saying like I'm thinking about some of the dreams that I previously did and like as I'm going to redo them on the podcast I'm like oh I probably should put some discretion in there because sometimes I dream about things and I don't realize how real they are in life right because in the dream time most of the time I'm observing it. I'm looking at it. And so it kind of plays out like a movie or I'm living out someone else's memories or something. Um, and so there's kind of like a level of dissociation, I guess, of being like, oh, <laughs> this is actually going on in reality in someone else's reality right now. So anyways, we're going to be talking about something... <laughs> that went on in my reality that um I'm just kind of coming to like this very stark realization that this is like actual thing and it is connected to the previous story time um so it's not necessarily about the red cow but when I met this woman and I did her QHHT session um when she came to the session she handed me two books from Dolores Cannon because QHHT was founded by Dolores Cannon, okay? And I, like, the Dolores Cannon, how I got to QHHT and everything like that is, like, a whole nother story, a whole nother situation, a whole nother set of dreams. Um, But I, I didn't come to her through reading her books or seeing her online, um, really, or anything like that. Um, uh, but this woman had read... Uh, a few of her books and so she brought two of them with her and I was like oh interesting fun and they're called um the custodian and oh my gosh what was the other one the custodian and oh my gosh I can't remember the other one but um after her session I went through and I read it I started reading both of the books. Now, just in general, um, I timestamp things. I, you know, get certain pages to read. So I'm not really like a person that listens to like videos on YouTube all the way through most of the time um, or like read a book start to finish. Uh, I usually get certain pages and then I read them. And then like over like the course of a year or something, I've read the whole book because I've read pages here and there and blah, 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 blah. Um, so anyways, I was doing that with these books 
And um, with, I believe that it's the Custodians, uh, the one with the UFO on it, which I thought was interesting. Um, there is a page in there, and I don't have it with me right now, but there's a page in there where it explained uh, this woman's alien abduction uh, dream. <laughs> oh my god. And I read it and I almost fell off of the bed, okay? And sometimes I am being dramatic when I say that, but sometimes I'm not. Because sometimes certain things match up so crazy to reality that it's like, you know, if it didn't happen to me personally, I might be like, that sounds a little crazy. Like, not that I'd be like, they're totally lying and they're doing it for, you know, whatever reason, but just like, does that really happen? But there are certain ways that things happen to where it's like, no, this is definitely a thing. (laughs) This is definitely a thing. Okay. So this is the story time about my possible alien abduction. I'm saying possible because I have not seen the this being or whatever again uh, that I know of because I don't know sometimes they come in different forms and so you can't quite make the connection of like oh this is the same being as this being blah 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 okay anyways let me get to the story so anyways (laughs) now this is so wild because she came to me in October Um, And I had had this dream in September and I don't have those dream journals anymore, those dream PDFs anymore. Um, I ended up deleting it. I'm like, it was just like on a whim that I just deleted everything. So I was really like upset because I feel like I wasn't getting the information I was asking for. And so I just deleted everything. But anyways, I know that this was in September and I'm pretty sure it was towards the end of September, like around the 25th like around September 25th, around that time, um, where I had this dream (laughs) and there was a lot of crazy stuff happening. Okay. Cause I feel like I have to bring it back a little bit. There was a lot going on in September. And I think that maybe I just got overwhelmed and I was just like, all of this stuff is happening and like, that's cool, but that's not what I asked about. Like, I'm still over here trying to manifest money for this hotel that I'm building. I'm trying to manifest money for savings and kids. And, like, all these things going on are cool. But that's not what I asked about. It was, September was wild. Like, really, the last year has been wild AF. I'm not going to lie to you. So, okay, let me calm down again. Okay. Okay. So, at the beginning of September, I had a dream, and this is is crazy because I'm calling these dreams, but I don't wholeheartedly believe that all of these are dream experiences. I do believe that, like, I'm actually traveling to different places when I'm sleeping um, and actually experiencing uh, other aspects of life. And then I wake up and I'm back in my reality well until recently which is a whole nother story but there was a dream that I had on September 13th and I know that this specific day because I actually ended up it was like such a startling dream that um that I actually woke up and (laughs) and I uh voice recorded it so in the dream or experience whatever is just like super wild I voice recorded and so I voice recorded this one so on the 13th I'm not getting into the whole things I don't want to make it too long I could go on and on about this um but I don't want to get too long when into it but um basically overall in this dream um, I was able to see that there are certain people who are so advanced and I, not all of these people do, I think, actually practice. I think certain people, um, you know, just I don't know how, but some people are, are advanced where they're actually able to project not only into your dream space, 
um, but also through your dream space to influence your actual physical reality. So this would be like me being able to tap into someone's dream and through their dreamscape to impact what's going on in their body while they sleep. This is what I was experiencing. And it was crazy. (laughs) It was crazy because there's like a whole other aspect of this that I'm going to leave out that's also really critical. But what I will say is that there was this uh, deity that came to visit named Ia, Ia, Ia. Um, But also sometimes called Inky. And I'm pretty sure that this is also Poseidon. Okay, who also could be Pata, who also could be related or connected to Patrick's. And I feel like Patrick's are priests of Pata. Uh, that's like a whole nother story, but anyways. So that was going on. This inky Ia being started showing up not only in my reality, but in two other friends that I know. Um, and stuff just, I don't know, stuff started getting crazy. So anyways, I had that dream. And so in this dream around the 25th, um, I have been doing some more research on this being, trying to figure out, you know, kind of like what the deal was. And when I went to sleep, I went to sleep. And in the dream... Um, we're going to call this version of myself DDA, okay? So DDA, which is me right now consciously talking to you. I was looking at another version of myself that we're going to call DDB, okay? (laughs) Which is funny because my maiden name does start with a B. We're going to call it DDB, okay? And DDB was huge. Like, definitely bigger than 5'2" really five three five four on really good days <laughs> but bigger than five two and she was like a projection I don't know how to describe this I was looking at myself and I was ginormous and I was up in the cosmos and I could see earth like pretty far away in the distance but I could still see it though and it was kind of like a cute little ball of like green and you know blue or whatever um and when I was looking at myself I was kind of sort of transparent a little bit and um it was almost like I was Uh, I had so much information streaming out of my body. It was like my body was like maybe a holographic projection of myself or something. But that body was filled with like just tons and tons and tons of information. Like in movies when, you know, somebody's getting like a life review or something or like they have died and they're getting like a life review and you see like all these flashes of memories and stuff. That's what I was seeing. It was like taking up my whole body and not only was it taking up my body, but I was actually projecting three different timelines. I feel like it was timelines out of my body towards Earth. Okay. <laughs> I wish I knew how to draw so I could post pictures of these things because it was wild. And when I tell you DDA, which is which is me, um, I was flabbergasted. I was like, what am I actually looking at right now? Because this version of myself was just streaming information, just streaming information and then sending it back to Earth. OK, um, and. <laughs> like there was no consciousness like I was the conscious aspect she was like the projection aspect I guess or also like transmitter and receiver she was receiving and transmitting um and this was off to my right okay so it was like my whole right side was taken up with this and I started to feel this sensation of like why am I being so pulled to the right let me look to the left And so when I looked to the left, I saw DDC, okay? 
And when I saw DDC, she looked relatively normal, like this version of myself, but she was sitting in like a dentist chair. And so as I'm sitting, I'm seeing her in this dentist chair, I'm like, why in the world are we sitting in a dentist chair? And so I start walking towards DDC because I'm like, what are we doing? I couldn't tell if she was moving. Like, I didn't know if she was okay. So anyways, as I get close to her, I start to morph into DDC. And so now DDA and DDC are one and DDB is still over there projecting consciousness or whatever she's doing. So as I'm sitting in the chair, this this dentist chair, and it's got like this huge big old white light and it looks like it reminds me a lot of my QHHT session and there was like this light machine and it looked like uh kind of <laughs> reminiscent of those cars that pour concrete where it's like that big old barrel that's spinning and then you see the concrete but instead with this one it's like a big old barrel and it's light coming out like a light beam coming out of it and so anyway so it's like over me like a dentist chair and then I realized that both of my arms are strapped down to this chair and I'm like whoa hold on what's going on here why am I strapped down to the chair so I'm like okay what is going on here you know because I'm in the dream world and I really 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 think that because life is so crazy in this world as well it takes a lot for me to gain awareness You know, I think for like certain people where they still believe that reality is like sane, I guess it'd probably be really easy for them to look at certain things and be like, this is clearly a dream. But honestly, in this reality, there's so much crazy stuff going on that I'm not even sure if this is not the dream. Do you know what I'm saying? And so I'm like, I guess this is a thing. Like, I really don't even know how I got in the cosmos. (laughs) I don't even know how I got in the cosmos strapped up to a dentist chair but here we are and so then all of a sudden I kid you I literally kid you not all of a sudden there's this big huge being now I have no clue how to describe this being but the best way I can describe you describe to you what he looked like was like a huge rock formation that was living I have no clue he had these striation kind of patterns, like, um, kind of sort of like the rocks in Sedona, when you get to, like, the, um, really, really nice rock formations, and there's, like, you know, patterns of different colors of the rock, so there's, like, red and brown and stuff, so this being was, it had red and brown striations, kind of like that, um, And it wasn't quite a rock. I really don't know what it was. But that's the best way that I could say it. And it was humongous. It was big. Like Michelin Man big. Like huge. And he came over there. And in true DD fashion. Because this really is how I am in general. Okay. Because I really don't have time to play. I was like who are you? (laughs) I'm like, first of all, who are you? Okay. (laughs) And what the hell are you? (laughs) And it was so funny because, and I love when people are like this, I guess beings too. I love when people respond like this. You know, he was like, you don't remember me? I'm like, friend, I definitely don't remember you. You know, like when, you know, I don't have time really most of the time for like the semantics of like, you know, this whole phase of like, I don't really know you and you don't really know me and all this like weird stuff where we don't uh, like I talk to everybody like I talk like we've known each other because I don't have time for the other stuff. And so he was like, you don't remember me? I'm like, should I remember you? Because no, like the I'm trying to think of the last time I saw some weird rock being that's like. 20,000 feet tall actually let me check my memory bank I clearly do not remember you like absolutely not and so then like I I kid you not this is like real life in the dream world (laughs) 
So after I confirmed to him that I have no clue who in the hell he is, and he had like a very human voice. I will say that he had a human voice. He sounded like a human white man with black hair. I don't know. That's my story. and I'm sticking with it. He sounded like a white man with black hair. Okay. I don't know. He does sound human. Um, a male. He literally shapeshifts into a praying mantis and is like, what about now? And in my mind, I'm like, am I the one, ta- like, am I the one, am I the one taking crazy pills? Because he literally just went from a whole rock to a praying mantis and that was supposed to trigger something. And I'm like, no, no, I don't know who you are. I'm like, what is your name? And so anyways, by this time, he's like irritated with me because I don't remember him. And I'm like really wrecking my brain. I'm like, we've got a praying mantis friend. Like, is this imaginary friend? Like, where in the world would I even meet a a talking praying mantis or a talking rock band? I'm like, am I even on earth? Like, is that even really a real thing? Because he seems really offended. Like, we, we were talking last week. Like, we went to school together or something. And so I'm like, what is wrong? Okay, maybe it's me. Maybe I'm the one drinking crazy sauce. Because <laughs> maybe it's me, okay? I don't know. And so anyway, so he um he's like annoyed or whatever. He's like, oh, just stay still. I'm like, okay. And so he takes my hand, which is still strapped to the dentist chair situation which I'm like this have nothing to do with my teeth oh look my hand is starting to like hurt talking about it which is so weird um so anyways he's like just stay still and I'm like like I can go anywhere friend like I can really go anywhere anyway and so he literally takes this huge needle and I'm like where are you about to stick that because it's a no He takes this huge needle and he sticks it into my palm and it hurt so badly. I was like, ouch, you know, I'm like screaming. I'm like, get away from me. (laughs) Get away from me, you crazy thing. Get away from me. And so he's like, hush. (laughs) I'm like, I'm not about to hush. That hurts. And so anyways, he's taking this big old needle and sticking it into my palm. And um, he's like, it's going to hurt because it's going against the energy. You know, like I've heard in the spiritual community that like your left hand pulls in energy and your right hand sends energy. Okay. Which um, like I trusted, I guess, because, you know, they've been in this situation longer than me. But when I like sit still and I think about um, the energies in my palms, and this is very easy, this is not like spiritual woo-woo, like if you sit still, sit in meditation, and you feel your palms, like you close your eyes, and you think about your hands, and you like send energy to them, you will start to get sensations that feel like at first it feels like something is sitting in your hand that's not there, then when you close your hand, you might still feel like you know, the indention of something there, that's like the beginning of feeling energies from your hands, okay? Those are energy centers. Um, And then, of course, with Reiki, we're talking about people who know how to amplify that energy and what you can feel and then transfer it into someone else's body who cannot feel that because they can't feel the energy blockages um, or whatever is going on. So anyway, so anyway, so... um. He's doing that, and I'm, like, in pain because it really hurts. And it feels like it's, like, rubbing my veins together. That's what it feels like. And it is so painful. And so, anyway, so he's telling me that, like, it's going against the energy because he's pushing something into my vein. Um, I mean, well, that's what he's doing, but he was pulling something out of that so he had to put the the needle in and then I was actually pulling um something out of that hand which it's not the sending out hand it's the receiving hand and so anyways as he's doing that I see this tiny little look like a tiny little microchip and I had to zoom in with my eyes so 
it's like you couldn't just see it uh you had to zoom in like use your eyes like a microscope I don't know you had to use your eyes like a microscope and when I zoomed in it was the tiniest little microchip and I was like oh okay he's trying to help me because some type of way I got chipped (laughs) and so now I have all these other questions I'm like how did that even get in there when did I even receive that like what chip is this and so anyways he's like all right, you're all done. And so, um, and so I wake up after that. Okay. And I, I literally, literally kid you not. I woke up and I had the tiniest, I I still have it. I still have it. Um, the tiniest little puncture wound that has a little bit of a scar where he stuck that that needle in my hand I I like literally I kid you not like I am not playing I'm so serious and I had that pain for about two weeks now the crazy part is that um at the hotel we were staying in there was a woman who was getting carpal tunnel surgery and I remember thinking like it's so crazy because um, if I had not had that dream and so vivid of what was going on in that dream, uh, I would I would have thought that I had carpal tunnel. Like I I wouldn't have thought that there was like some weird being in my dream pulling out a microchip from my palm. And it's so funny because I know that that sounds crazy as hell, but um, <laughs> I have come to know that this reality. Uh, the truth is a lot stranger than fiction. It's a lot stranger than fiction. Uh, it's wild. And so that's exactly what I read in the book. It was like, there are beings, <laughs> there are people <laughs> who have strange alien extraterrestrial encounters where um, the beings show up as mantis beings Um, There's usually a lot of pain associated to it. There's usually some type of medical experiment or experience or something going on. And they usually carry the pain back with them. And when I read that, because up until that point, now this is like a month later, like I had the dream and, you know, I don't know, like maybe for certain people, they would like immediately research into it. But I have so much crazy stuff happen in dreams that sometimes I'm just like, I don't even know what to say about that. Like, I don't even know what to do with that. I don't know where to put it. And so I'm just going to wait until it comes back around. And like so, with this book, um, it came back around because I didn't even meet this woman until the next month. So it was like she was put specifically in my path. Um, one of her guides or something told her specifically to bring these two books and in one of the books it perfectly explained explained my dream experience and she had no clue about that and I I'm telling you I almost fell off of the bed I'm like what is life um so I did a little bit of research and um so as far as I know, I do have like some koi son, koi son or koi koi son. I'm not exactly sure the difference. Sorry to my ancestors. Um, and they actually do have a mantis deity. And I was like, oh, I wonder if this is like some type of ancestral spirit or something like that. Uh, even though, like I said, he sound like a white man. Um he definitely talked and he definitely had like an air of like he was in charge and he was definitely offended that I did not remember him and he was annoyed by that and I'm like okay like I must be missing I must be really missing something and he was actually coming to help me out because I've been chipped and it has so many questions but it's like in the moment when you're like in it <laughs> it's like so much going on that it's like I don't even have time to ask the questions and everything like that. Like I don't even have the time. 
to ask all the questions that need to be asked. But, but yes, (laughs) that is my story time about a possible (laughs) extraterrestrial encounter. (laughs) Oh my goodness, I... I'm really hoping that there are going to be people in the comments that are like, yeah, totally have interacted with them before. And this is what the deal is. (laughs) Totally hoping for that. Okay, my friends. Well, I will see you. I will see you in the next video. Bye.